I've got a little package from Amazon. We've got our 12 volt coil in, it's like 22 bucks. So that's gonna go in. Um, I think while I'm at it, if you look, we've got spliced wires, we've got just a cobbled mess of uh, wires in this thing. And I guess these go to the headlight. It, they're bolted together with a bolt, putting three wires together. I'm guessing that goes to each headlight. Um, it's just a mess of wiring in here. So I think what I'm going to do, since I'm converting it to 12 volts, is I'm going to go ahead and rewire some of this thing. Um, Not all of it, but uh, we are going to, well, I may do quite a bit of it because it is a mess. Uh, we've got a post here. Well, we may leave. Trying to see what that all goes down. We'll leave that intact. That looks decent. Doesn't look like that's been messed with the one that goes over here and just because I'm converting it to 12 volts doesn't mean I have to rewire it it's just yeah all this looks good this little harness here looks fine so we'll leave that alone uh, what we are gonna mess with we're gonna re wanna rerun a new wire to the uh, coil and we're going to get rid of this headlight wiring because this is a mess. Um, not only that, but I know at least that one over there, the wire going into the headlight, the insulation is off of it and it's grounding up against the uh, housing. And so that's just a direct short. So we don't want to mess with that. This one over here is not much better. So the headlights themselves just need to be rewired. So we're not going to, we're going to just get rid of all this old wiring here on the headlights. We're going to get rid of the wiring that goes to the generator because we will be putting an alternator on it. So uh, for right now though, we'll just get rid of the wires, get them out of the way. There's this whole harness they've got that goes to the front so we're just going to get rid of that um, and rewire this thing well like I said just the coil for right now because that's the only wire we need uh, and I'll redo I'll put a new end on this wire here this one looks okay probably leave that in place um, yeah, I don't know. Get that one going to the headlights. This one must be the coil wire. So yeah, it needs some work. So let me get started on clearing the old wiring out. Make things simple. I'm, I'm not even gonna try to get these nuts off. I'm just going to cut cut the wires off, pull them out, do the same for the coil, and uh, just pull this whole harness out, and, and then get it up out of this end, and probably go ahead and take the voltage regulator out of the tractor. So let me get all that stuff out, and we'll pick back up after that. Alright, so we've got the coil wired up. I did not redo the wires on the ignition switch because these screws would not come out and I did not want to break them off. Um, I haven't decided yet when I put the um, when I put the uh, alternator on if I want to use a uh, coil with an accessory position uh, to uh, you run the alternator through. Uh, or if I'm going to use a diode or a uh, light bulb. 
So I haven't decided that yet, so I just left that alone for now until I make that decision. Because um, the ignition switch is working, so I figured I'd just leave that alone. Um, I haven't completely disconnected the uh, amp meter. I did disconnect it on this side. Uh, kind of cleaned up the wiring over here because there was some extra stuff. Took those out. Took the voltage regulator out. Uh, disconnected the headlight wires, pulled them out. Uh, I did have the battery disconnected while I was doing all this. And I ran this wire. They had it running up over the head of the engine. What I did is I ran it up up here and it goes down and there it is coming back down. Uh, I don't know how it ran stock but I figured this is the best way to uh, keep the heat away from it and it's going down to our new 12 volt coil so now let me hook the battery cable back up and we'll see if it'll fire up that should be all the wiring we need to run this thing like I said I did not mess with any of the wiring that runs to the solenoid because um, because all that looked okay and uh, we may address that later on, but for now, we'll leave it. It's it's nice and wrapped, and it looks like it has probably been replaced uh, with maybe an aftermarket harness. The wires look in really good shape to have been the original ones, or somebody made up a harness for it. But either way, uh, those wires are in good shape, so we're going to leave them alone for now. Uh, so a little bit on this block in my plans... I picked up some bars leak, which I'm going to put in here and see if that will seal it for now. I originally had planned on scraping all this stuff off and re-epoxying it. The pro there's two problems with that. One, as you can see when they did it, the epoxy runs down. You would almost have to have this engine on its side and you really just need to grind out uh, uh, grind out the crack uh, and drill it out and then drill the ends of it out so the crack won't spread then take your grinder and grind all in the crack so that you uh, can get some epoxy down into the crack just so you've got more surface area for the epoxy and then uh, go about that way the problem and I the problem, like I said, is that um, you almost need to have this thing on its side because the epoxy is just going to run out. Uh, JB Weld's not thick enough that, I mean, it, it'll kind of stay in there, but it's still going to want to run out. So, it's not a great solution. Um, the other problem is, okay, you can see there's a crack here. And it's bulged out. Uh, that is not, you can see this uh, casting in the block right here. And there's a casting below it. They don't have any epoxy here. But this is raised up. This is broken. This is cracked. It's not leaking here. But it, the block is cracked right here and it's raised out. So it's pushed out. Uh, they've got epoxy all along here. So I'm assuming there's a crack all along here. It's leaking right here. So there's a crack here. It looks like a crack up here, in here. There's one up here. They've got epoxy running all the way back here, so I'm assuming the crack runs back here. They've got epoxy on the front of the motor, and you can see a crack right there. So this block has a crack from the front all the way, epoxy stops back here all through here, it's leaking here. So we've got a lot of cracks in this thing. Um, they've got it epoxied all behind the oil filter. So there's just a lot, a lot, a lot of epoxy and cracks on this block. So if I can put some bars leak in it and it will slow it down or stop the leak, for temporarily um, I'll probably do that and that gives me some time 
to look for another block. I think that's going to be the best route. Uh, I don't want to go through all the trouble of epoxying that thing. Uh, like I said, to do it right, the motor really needs to be on its side, uh, which would be hard with it in the tractor. And if that motor is coming out to try to repair the crack, that motor's not going back in. Uh, if I pull the motor, I'm not pulling it to repair cracks. I'm pulling it to replace it with a crack-free block. So I've been scouring Craigslist. I can get, I've seen parts tractors anywhere from uh, $400 to $800. Um, there was one guy was selling two tractors, a 8N and a, I think a 2N for six fifty. Um, I can't tell if they're this one need, this is a front distributor motor. I couldn't tell if that one was a front or side. He only had one picture and it was on this side and you couldn't zoom in very far. It did not look like it had a, uh, a generator on it. So either the generator had been removed or but I didn't also didn't see a distributor. I think the distributors on the other side though. I don't I don't know um, but anyway, um, I don't know what year that was and what would be involved with uh, if I found a good block cheap that had the distributor and, you know, if it was a complete motor and it was a side uh, distributor motor, what would be involved, what all's different, uh, you know, where I could just swap to a side distributor motor because it really doesn't matter to me which one it is. Um, but if I was just going to get a bare block, you know, I need to get a front distributor motor. So, anyway, uh, the plans, like I said, get this thing running. We'll make sure everything on the tractor works. Uh, I did raise the hydraulics and everything, but I haven't really tested them very much with an implement on them or anything like that. Make sure transmission, everything else is good on the tractor. And then, if that's good, then we'll look for a block. You know, if I can find a parts tractor for uh, $400, you know, I may be able to find a block even cheaper. So, like I said, we'll, uh, we'll see how it does. Put some bars leak in it. Maybe it'll stop it or slow it down so we can actually use the tractor a little bit see what works, what doesn't, what it's going to need. Uh, right now I've only got about $65 into it. I bought a coil, $22, and I bought $20 uh, top link for three point and pin for it so we can put an implement on it. Um, and I bought a float for $18.99 or something like that. So I've got right at about 60 bucks, maybe a hair over with tax, into this thing. So uh, not much into it so far. So now that we've got all that hooked up, let me hook the battery back up. We'll see if this thing will crank up. We'll see how it runs. We'll put some bars leak in the radiator. All right, I've got the gas on. I don't know if it may have leaked out. I don't know if our battery's good enough to start it. Um, but we will see. Um, gas on, key on, choke out. I need a little more choke. Dripping with gas. Let me give it a minute. 
I think what happened, the uh, this battery has a dead cell in it, and uh, although it was cranking over when I put the voltmeter on it, it only had 10 volts in it. And so going through the uh, resistor for the coil, on the other side of the resistor, I only had 7 volts. And so I think we just didn't have enough voltage uh, to have good spark with that 12 volt coil. But now that I've got the battery charger on it, we're, we're running and uh, it cranked right up. So I think I just lost spark because the uh, that battery is so weak. So you can see we've got some antifreeze starting to leak. Must not have a thermostat in it because it's already circulating. Let me read through these and we'll uh, read through the instructions and we'll uh, put some of this in there.